Hey guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. In today's video, we're going to try and do some beginner's tips to help newer players out. Now, if you are a more experienced player, feel free to stick around. And if you have any other tips that I that I leave out of this one and I don't have in my beginner's guide, uh, just leave them in the comments and we can make a second video covering more tips if we get enough. So if you are a new player and you're just starting out in the game, Feel free to check out my beginner's guide. I'll leave a link in the description. I go through the absolute basics in the game. And this this one's sort of just those more in-depth things that you know I get asked a lot in the comments and stuff like that. So without any more, let's get into the video. The first thing I'm going to look at is the Arcane Labyrinth. Now, um, this is a really great feature. It's sort of that puzzle mode. You work your way through battle enemies and all that sort of thing. As you can see, I'm on the third floor. I've already done the first two floors. It's a three-floor event. And for this one, uh, I just wanted to talk about maximizing the experience and gold you can earn from it. So you can see here that um, you, have, you have the brown flags and you have the red flags. Now, the red flags are going to drop better relics that help you just in that labyrinth mode for that reset. So if you want to get the best relics to help you push through it, then go for that. Early game, I find it not too hard unless you don't have a healer, in which case you can look at um, any of these wagons along the way. You can click on them and see if they have a unit that's a healer, looking for something like a Nomura or a Rowan or something like that to help your team heal. Because the first couple times you do jump into the labyrinth if you didn't pull a healer or a lucius with the shield um, you're going to struggle a little bit on survival so it's not bad to look for those wagons in that case i'd suggest never really go for these um the romas basically the loot's never worth it you do not want to spend diamonds on those so don't even just just ignore them basically so what you're going to want to do to optimize your gold and experience you do get like i said the red ones do give you better relics However, if you look at what the loot you get from it, you get 14k experience, you get 29k gold and 210 points. If we go to these ones, 14k gold, uh, sorry, 14k experience, 29k gold and 210 coins. So it's exactly the same loot. So if you're trying to optimize efficiency, get more experience, get more gold and get more tokens, what you want to do is take the path that offers the most flags, meaning the most enemies to battle and ignoring like anything else. So for instance, my path here, and as you can see, as you scroll up, anything that's not gonna be an enemy will be a blank one. You just have to be closer to see them, but all the wishing wells which heal you, the resurrection guy, the mystics which resurrect, um, they'll all be clear. So what you wanna do is you basically just wanna go a path up here that is gonna get you the most loot. So for instance, when I come up here, I would, wouldn't, definitely wouldn't wanna to go to this resurrect guy unless I absolutely had to, because I'd go to him and then the next one I'd be forced to go to is the wagon, meaning I would have missed out on two areas there that would have had enemies and would have got me more experience and more gold. So that's something definitely to consider early on is getting more experience, more gold, because it really does help early game. So. That's going to be it for the Labyrinth. Like I said, in your first couple of runs, if you're struggling for sustain, you don't have a Shimura to just carry you through it or something like that, feel free to pick up something from an abandoned wagon to help you sustain your team. But besides that, you really just want to go the path that's going to give you um, the most experience and gold. Because early on, it's not too difficult. You don't really need to aim for these red banners to get the, um, the better relics. You can normally cruise through it not too bad. So that is going to be it for the Arcane Labyrinth. The next thing I want to look at is the arena. So the arena is something that you may want to push hard early to get rating because there's achievements that give you diamonds if you get higher ratings. Feel free to do that. For me personally, what I find to be what I've been doing anyway is I use, because you, you get arena tokens um, from quests and stuff like that. So you can see I've got 127. You get a certain amount of free arena battles every day which you can go through. Your VIP level will determine how many free battles you do get. I think I'm up to about five on this account because I'm VIP five or something like that. You start off with three, I think it is. But you may wanna make sure that you're using your free arena battles every day without doubt. And don't be afraid just to attack the lowest enemy. Um, like I said, for me on this account, this is still a fairly new account. What I did the whole time was just attack the lowest enemy that I had much higher power than that I knew I was going to be able to beat. For instance, something like this. I know I've got more power. I know I'm going to de demolish this enemy and keep going. So the reason you want to just really guarantee yourself wins is because you get loot 
if you win, if you lose, you don't get loot. So it's only a little bit of dust, a little bit of gold, stuff like that. But early game, it really does help. Like the 10 dust or the 90,000 gold that you get from wins is going to scale a lot better. So, so see, there you go. I've got 90k gold. That's really helpful early game. Um, and sometimes you get dust. You basically just always want to win is the, is the basic gist of it. And if all the enemies are too hard for you, you can hit refresh and there's no limit to refreshing. So you can just refresh away the whole time. Just make sure you're winning. That's all there is to it. Um, and then later on, if you want to push rating, what I find better to do to push rating is, for instance, on this account, about a week ago when I was going to do some summons, I wanted some more diamonds, so I wanted to push rating. I used about 30 of my saved arena tokens and what I did was the same thing. I didn't go for enemies that look challenging because if you lose, you're gonna lose a bunch of rating. When I'm pushing rating, um, just for those achievements, early game anyway, late game's gonna be a complete different thing, but early game, you just wanna attack enemies that you know you're gonna win. You might not get much um, rating for it, but if you just keep winning, eventually you'll get to that next, ra uh, next rank and get that loot. So that's arena. That's all I really did wanna cover in there. The next thing I wanna talk about is your heroes and sort of what teams to build. So with this game, it's basically your summons are gonna decide on what teams you're gonna build. It's it's the RNG that gives you the units that makes you decide what path you wanna go. And more specifically, I wanna talk about moving on to using these selective um, elemental scrolls because when you, when you use these scrolls, you get them um, sometimes from events, sometimes from clearing chapters and stuff like that. You wanna be picky on these and use them on a faction that is really gonna help your team. For instance, on this account, I'm using it on Graveborn because I really need a lot of Graveborn fodder because Shimira, who is an absolute beast, is gonna be my main unit that's gonna carry me throughout the game. So I really wanna have her beefed up as much as possible. So I'm gonna need that fodder to keep feeding into it. And also you need copies of her. So the fact that you need dupes, means you want to summon them. Um, some other really good options on my main account, I'm going for Wilders, because if we look at the portraits here, Wilders just have so many good heroes that are really good into the end game. You've got Nomura here, who is a healer, like the only really solid healer besides the new healer, Rowan, which we'll talk about in a sec. Um, you've got Laika and you've got Tassie, who are both amazing as well. Um, you've also got the new Ninja Turtle, who I really like as well. And also uh, the Sirius and... Eron aren't too bad either. Not the best, but still not too bad. So Wilders are a really solid faction to go for. You do also with the Wilders have probably the best uh, rare hero, which is going to be Arden. He just, at higher levels, he becomes insane with entangling roots. He just has good control over the enemies for days. But don't worry about him too much early on because he doesn't become effective. He gets really effective after level 141. So he's not the early one. The hero you want to look at early on that's a really good carry unit is Savius from the Rare Heroes. He can just do a lot of damage, a lot of self-sustain and stuff like that. But we're getting a little bit, little bit off topic. Like I was saying, in the Noble Tavern, those selective summons, you want to focus on whatever the, the early stages of your game has pushed you towards. There's a good path you can take with every faction. I personally think Wilders are probably the best value being that uh, there's more of the elite heroes that you want to summon. Um, the Graveborn are getting better because they keep introducing more good heroes. Um, but Graveborn's basically just if you're going for a Shimira carry. And when we talk about that, Arcane Labyrinth, something I forgot to mention, when you go to the shop, the store for the Arcane Labyrinth, you really want to be buying Shimira. Shimira is just such a good carry unit, amazing for progression, and I definitely recommend taking her. Um, no matter what your other heroes are, you can put her into a team of non-Graveborn and she'll do still do amazing things. So she's the one I would really be aiming for from that Labyrinth store, 100%. She's just, she really is amazing. After you get a maxed out Shamira way down the track, you know, you can look at Nomura or Kassos or something like that, but Shamira is the real focus. But besides that, I also do really like um, Lightbearers. So the thing about Lightbearers that, that makes them really good is that after a seven day login, you do get an elite plus version of Belinda, who is a really good attacker. And the thing about getting an elite plus version of her, it's really nice. It's the same as having two copies and ascending them together. So really, really good starting with her. Um, you do also have, if we go down and find him, Hogan, who's a decent early tank. And you also have um, Muriel, uh, I suck at her name, but she's also another good attacker. Um, from the Lightbearer faction. 
it's just it's becoming a better faction as well because you've got things like you've got Rowan and you've also got Rosaline who are amazing support characters. So the 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 light bearers used to be really poor until they started getting these more buffs. You've also got Lucius who is amazing. Uh, Forks is great late game. So basically, just see see where the game leads you and go from there. The next thing that I want to talk about, and this is something that I get asked about a lot, and that is using um, these basically time tickets. Now, the time tickets give you loot based on the campaign stage that you're at. So the further you are in campaign, the more AFK rewards you get from collecting loot. So if I was five chapters further, I would have got more loot for the exact same time. So these ones give you loot based on time AFK. So if I'm only at stage chapter one and I use this, I'm gonna get much less than I am at say chapter 10. So you wanna save these as much as you can. There is a cap of 99. So as you can see, I've got these six hour gold ones. I'm at 96 of them. Once I get them maxed, I, I will, I'll just go and use like 10 or six of them because I'm just gonna to have to use them, otherwise I can't collect them. And then you collect your gold, and then you just let them stack up again. That's why it's very important not to waste these early on. Um, you can try using them, it might give you a little boost and get you through another stage, but I definitely think saving them for end game, where you're gonna get the more value out of them, is the way to go. So definitely, definitely I'd be holding on to those and not, not, not sort of wasting them straight away. Next up is going to be the Resonating Crystal and Hero Levels. Now, this is a very important one. Uh, I, I actually saw, I had a mate that just started playing and he showed me his account and it just it, it just made me facepalm. He had about eight characters leveled up, a few levels, you know, some to 20, some to 40, some to 60. This is a very important one that you don't want to mess up on. Only level five heroes. Doesn't matter which five. Normally, you just want to do your five highest rarity heroes. As you can see, I've got the mythic. I've got the legendary heroes at the top. I've leveled them because they uh, they have the highest level potential. Your rarity increases the potential cap. Um, for instance, elite plus like uh, like this guy here. His level cap is level. 120 however if you put him into the resonating crystal he can actually go above that he can go he can go to 140 he can go to 150 but only because he's in the resonating crystal so the thing you want to do is your five highest rarity heroes are the ones you want to level every other hero that you want to use you just want to put in this resonating crystal so don't waste xp by putting it leveling up more than five units basically five highest rarity is the simplest way to do it Five highest rarity, level them up, just keep leveling. And then every hero down the bottom here, you can put anyone in there and they'll be boosted up to the level of your fifth highest level hero. So don't waste experience like that. Next up, we have friends. Now, friends are great, really important because you wanna be sending and receiving the hearts, which give you more summons, which you can actually get elite heroes off. I saw one on Facebook the other day where someone got three elite heroes from a 10 pool. Very uncommon, but still not too bad. But you also have the mercenaries, which are an awesome, awesome feature, which I've got a video about, which you can check out. But basically, you can use a friend's hero to help you get past roadblocks. Um, they keep the rarity. So like, obviously, this Belinda being Mythic Plus, she'll keep that Mythic Plus, but she will scale her level um, to where my heroes are at. So just a great feature if you do get stuck in the campaign to get through. So searching for i don't know get online get on discords get on facebook if you can make some friends out there you can get them in-game friends and then you know you get some better heroes to help you along the way there's so many people progressed in this game now that new players can find some decent friends and really help them if they are roadblocked so that's a great feature as well and the final thing that I want to cover in this video, like I said, if you're watching this and you've got some really good tips that I don't have in my beginner's guide or this video, feel free to leave them there and I can always collate and make another video. But the last thing I want to go through is the peaks of time. Now, the peaks of time is a great place to get your team buffed up. There's so much loot that dropped from these things. Uh, you get a lot of uh, gear upgrade materials. Um, you get a lot of gold, a lot of dust, which is really important for leveling heroes. It's just amazing and you also get relics so as soon as you open up a new one of these test it out and try and clear it if you can't clear it for instance secrets of the forest is a really hard one to clear don't stress if you can't clear it do the best you can then just go away do other stuff and then come back to it and see if you can clear it because 
the, like I said, the rewards you can get, even if you can't completely clear it, all the little chests you get along the way are really val valuable to help you progress. Like I said, dust, which is if we go to here, go to heroes. Uh, I don't think there's any heroes I can actually display it on. Maybe these guys. As you can see down the bottom right there, if I click on it, you can see it there. That dust is a very rare resource that you want to get as much as you can of. And if you can unlock one of those peaks of time, jump into it and get a bunch of that dust, get some gear, get some upgrade materials, it can really help you progress your team and get that bit further. So... That is going to be it for these tips, guys. Um, like I said, happy to make another video, but those are just some tips about like frequently asked questions that we do get in the comments. So I just wanted to make that and cover that and hopefully help some new players out. So thanks for watching, guys, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.